Good morning. It's Wednesday, January 8th. I'm Elizabeth Hasselbeck. Former Defense Secretary Robert Gates taking a direct hit on President Obama, saying he does not trust our military leaders, and this morning the fallout is growing. All right. Did you know unemployment benefits create jobs? Hmm. Voting for unemployment insurance helps people and creates jobs. And voting against it does not. Uh, is the president's trickle-up theory creating a nation of takers? Think about that while Steve talks. Okay, and what does this have to do with Obamacare? I came in like a I never hit so Believe it or not, there's a connection, although I don't know what that has to do with anything. <laughs> We're getting a lot of shots I wasn't expecting. Uh, happy Billy Ray. Box and Friends Hour 2 for Wednesday starts right now. Hi, I'm Evander Holyfield, four-time heavyweight champ of the world. You're watching Fox and Friends. And star of Big Brother in the UK. Sure. He's making some headlines That's over there. That's right, actually. Right. Speaking about uh, heavyweight fight, uh, you know what? The wow. White House can't be happy about a brand new book. It has been excerpted uh, first yesterday by Bob Woodward in the pages of the Washington Post and essentially uh, talks about how, you know, Robert Gates always has had a reputation as very even-tempered, calm person while he's worked at uh, the CIA, the National Security Council, and then as Secretary of Defense for Presidents Bush's and Obama as well. Uh, but then he, uh, he's taken this book to essentially throw the White House under the bus. Talks about how the president, this president doesn't like Hamid Karzai, can't stand him, how Joe Biden doesn't have any idea what he's doing, and makes the allegation that this president, Hillary Clinton, made political decisions uh, made uh, decisions based on politics over anything else. It's amazing. Uh, for example, the thing that sticks out, and, and Robert Gates says he, the president likes the soldiers, likes the troops, does not trust leadership. An example, an excerpt from his book goes like this. All too early in the Obama administration, suspicion and distrust of senior military officers by senior White House officials, including the president and vice president, became a big problem for me as I tried to manage the relationship between the commander in chief and his military leaders. The president doesn't believe in his, down, in, in his own strategy and doesn't consider the war to be his. For him, it's all about getting out. Now, we're not talking about Iraq. Mm -hmm. We're talking about Afghanistan. The good uh, war. Essentially, the president got pinned to the mat by his own statements to get elected in 2008, yes. saying that's a war that had to be run, should have been focused on. We took our eye off the ball. So he's saying that the president okayed 40,000 troops into Afghanistan not believing that it would be successful. How do you feel if you're the family of sure. a soldier? Whatever you think of President Bush, don't think for a second he put a soldier into battle that he didn't think was there for the right reason or to be successful. No, and every person serving felt as though he's with him all the way, for the most part. I mean, here, this trickle-down effect to the troops is um, disheartening, to say the least. Uh, he also took sharp aim at the vice president, sparing, sparing uh, no sharp words. Listen to this quote. He said, I think he has been wrong on nearly every major foreign policy and national security issue over the past four decades. Well, yeah, that's that, inclusive. That's going to be helpful if uh, Joe Biden decides to run for president. Hey, how, how would he do as commander in chief? Let's go to the Bob Gates book. Uh, he also accuses uh, Mr. Biden of poisoning the well against military leadership. And he refers to uh, what Joe Biden wanted to do in Afghanistan. He said he was wrong on that. You know, he wanted to do the counterterrorism strikes from afar. Uh, Mr. Gates says the whack-a-mole hits on Taliban leaders were not a long-term strategy. He does not think think Joe Biden has made good uh, military decisions. When it came to Libya, they were making military decisions without anyone from the Defense Department in, uh, in the room at the time. He also went on to say that when it came to defense spending and the elimination of don't ask, don't tell, they felt, Admiral Mullen and he felt like they were blindsided by the president's decision, were not even read into it, were forced to react to it within one day. Now, he is very complimentary to the former senator, former secretary of state, Hillary Clinton, in many ways. However, when it comes to the surge in Iraq, he has a different take, and was astonished at what took place. First off, let's link, think back. She's running for president. She's in the primary process. Comes back, I believe she sat on foreign relations, to question General Petraeus about conditions in Iraq that Petraeus was portraying, and he would be correct, as getting better and improving. Listen. I think that um, 
I, the reports that you provide to us really require the willing suspension of disbelief. But really? Disbelief that things were getting better. Disbelief that a surge would be effective. She, like many, like the Secretary of State today, did not believe in the surge, did not vote for the surge. Okay, that's understandable, unless, of course, you find out this about the truth. Right, so many did suspect that, and she, her stance was not supportive of the mission there, but this is what Gates writes in the book. Hillary told the president that her opposition to the 2007 surge in Iraq had been political because she was facing him in the Iowa primary. The president conceded vaguely that opposition to the Iraq surge had been political. To hear the two of them making these admissions and in front of me was surprising. It was as surprising as it was. Let me just qualify Absolutely. because Absolutely. he was Secretary of Defense. Sorry, Steve. He was Secretary of Defense at the time yes. trying to make the case that the surge could work, but he knew he had to get political favor and win over Washington to do it. So to hear them talk like this, I didn't even believe it when I was against you, is outrageous. Well, okay, so they were saying it out loud and admitting that the president made decisions based on politics. And Hillary was doing the same thing. Charles Krauthammer says this is really bad. I remember saying here on the night of the president's speech in which he announced the surge and then immediately announced the withdrawal. And then for the four years ever since, he never spoke to explain to the American people why the war, why the surge was important. He now has the lowest p public approval of any war in modern history because it had no leadership. But I think this is a shocking revelation. I assume that he didn't believe in this war from his own actions. But here is from somebody sitting with the president three months in, and I do think this is an indictment of the president that rises above everything else he's done in his presidency. But it shouldn't be surprising. I mean, Mr. Gates talks about how everything from the di first day of the Obama administration was geared toward getting re-elected. And so, uh, regardless of the topic, it would go through the political team. And we're not just talking about uh, the, uh, the chief of staff. We're also saying that uh, people like Valerie Jarrett, David Axelrod, Robert Gibbs, the press secretary, all had a say in national security issues. He says, Mr. Gates does, that uh, he'd never seen anything like that before. Maybe it happened in another White House, but he couldn't believe it. Well, remember, the, the administration was calling uh, to be a transparent administration, and certainly the curtain is pulled back at this point. We want, we want to know from you, too. Is it, do you think it's okay to criticize a sitting president? Does Robert Gates have a right to do it? Worked under every president since Nixon, every administration, at least, since Nixon, sure. the, minus Clinton. Um, does this seem okay with you? Is this information that is helpful? From right inside the Oval Office, uh, right onto the pages of this brand new book called Duty. All right.